Hello, this is Dr. Ronald Wharton. I am an attending cardiologist at Montefiore Medical Center in Bronx, New York, and assistant professor of medicine at the Albert Einstein College of Medicine. And I thought I would share with you an interesting echo, uh, which I, uh, I saw in late 2012. Here's an image from a 60-year-old gentleman. He's roughly 60. Uh, who was admitted because of severe congestive heart failure and shortness of breath. This is the anapical three-chamber view. And let's watch that play for a little bit. After you have a chance to look at the image, and again, this is a three-chamber apical long axis view with color, what would you say the problem is? Is there severe aortic regurgitation? Is there severe mitral regurgitation? Is the patient's problem both? with the aortic valve and the mitral valve, or is neither valve really the issue? Before we decide, let's take a look at some still frames from the same patient. This is a still image taken from the very image that you just saw in, when it was moving. You'll notice that I have frozen it on a frame that shows a very impressive, I think, mitral regurgitation jet. However, you'll also notice that if you time this with the electrocardiogram in the lower left-hand corner, you can see that we are solidly in diastole. That's not what you learned in medical school. A mitral regurgitation is supposed to be a systolic phenomena. This is the same patient, and what we're seeing here is an apical four-chamber continuous wave Doppler through the mitral valve. And you'll notice that the systolic mitral regurgitation is a fairly faint jet. It occurs mostly in the early part of systole and sort of tapers off by the end of systole. But you'll also notice that there is a more dense mitral regurgitant signal at a much lower velocity, peaking at about two meters per second during diastole in every part of the frame. This is an M mode through the mitral valve in the parasternal long axis. And you can see two important findings. First, there is diastolic fluttering of the anterior mitral leaflet Diastolic fluttering of the anterior mitral leaflet is commonly associated with aortic regurgitation. It is a marker of the presence of aortic insufficiency, but not a marker per se of how severe the aortic insufficiency is. However, you also see that the mitral valve closes considerably before the onset of electrical systole by timing the closure of the mitral valve to the electrocardiogram at the top of the screen. So this is a summary of the findings that we saw here. We have diastolic mitral regurgitation that is actually more impressive to the eye than the systolic mitral regurgitation, and that's corroborated by the continuous wave Doppler through the mitral valve in the apical four chamber and the M mode demonstrating premature closure of the mitral valve with diastolic fluttering of the anterior leaflet. So let's take another look at the first image that we saw. As we play this, you can see that there's a very impressive aortic insufficiency jet coming out of, obviously, the aortic valve. And you see the mitral regurgitation actually looks pretty significant, but when you look at it closely, you'll notice that the mitral regurgitation and the aortic insufficiency are really happening at the same time. There is some systolic mitral regurgitation, but it's not quite as much. This is the same finding shown in the apical four-chamber view. Again, notice that the aortic insufficiency is occurring at the same time as the more generous portion of the mitral regurgitation. Here we have a M mode with color through the aortic valve in the parasternal long axis, just demonstrating that there is a very turbulent aortic insufficiency signal uh, that is almost as wide as the entire left ventricular outflow tract. So in fact, this patient has diastolic mitral regurgitation and there are many causes of diastolic mitral regurgitation. Here are some examples. This is a patient whose PR interval was almost 400 milliseconds. Almost the entire mitral regurgitation jet is in diastole, and the mitral regurgitation is low velocity because it's being driven not by ventricular systole, but by atrial relaxation, which is occurring well before ventricular systole has started because of the very prolonged AV conduction. This is an example of diastolic MR that we see all the time with patients who have atrial flutter. Every time there is a, an atrial systole, there is an atrial diastole, and so there are lots of tiny little diastolic MR jets in between the systolic MRs as well.
So atrial flutter can cause diastolic MR just as any cause of prolonged AV conduction. And furthermore, what can happen on the left side of the heart can happen on the right side of the heart. So as you see in the very next slide here, this is a dense tricuspid regurgitation signal. But if you notice, the TR jet actually starts considerably before electrical systole because if you notice the electrocardiogram, there's a very prolonged TR interval. So if you were to look at this on color, you would see a blue jet of TR in the short axis around the aortic valve happening considerably before the aortic valve closed. So to summarize, AV valvular regurgitant jets are not uncommon during diastole. Anytime there is restrictive physiology, such as cardiac amyloidosis, severe aortic insufficiency, in theory, severe pulmonic insufficiency, if it were acute, could do it, but that's a much less common entity. Anytime there's prolonged AV conduction, this can happen, and in atrial flutter as well. The teaching point before interpreting any study is having significant MR or TR. Make sure that the flows are occurring when you think they are, and if you're not sure, take a careful look. For those of you interested, the etiology of aortic insufficiency in this patient was degeneration of an old bioprosthetic valve, and that was successfully replaced with a new one, and the patient had an uneventful course. Hope you enjoyed this, and thank you for tuning in.